Wisconsin State Senator Janet Bewley of Mason has risen to a top position in the legislature. She was elected by her peers to be the Democratic leader of the Senate. Almanac North producer Greg Rell talked with her this week about what that added influence will mean for her district. I have always tried very hard to represent them well, to bring that northern Wisconsin voice to Madison. And it's a bit of a fight, you know, for me even, I always have to push on that because people don't understand what it's like to be truly in the north, to have um, fewer uh, traffic lights than any other district in the state, to have more tiny small towns where you go grocery shopping at the dollar store because that's what's open when you go home at night. Um, I don't have a, a Target store in my entire district. And down here, you kind of freak out if you don't have these kinds of stores available. And the things that people are interested in are almost always very similar to the rest of the state, but we typically don't get our share. It's easy to sort of write us off. So, but now that I'm in leadership, there is this um, sudden awareness that, you know, Janet, that's the first time someone from northern Wisconsin has been in leadership in a very long time, in a very long time. And so it's, it's really good to see that there's an awareness that this whole part, any time I can put northern Wisconsin in people's minds in Madison, I'm happy. And so now I can do it through through this responsibility now as well. well let's pivot now to kind of the uh, the topic du jour, uh, the topic that's been dominating everybody for quite a few uh, weeks now. It's COVID-19. Uh, last month, uh, the legislature passed a COVID relief bill. A lot of Democrats didn't feel like it went far enough. Uh, talk a little bit about that relief bill and what it does and what you'd like to see going forward. It was pretty much geared to the CARES Act of the federal government. And so in order to take um, the full van advantage of whatever money the feds give us in Wisconsin, we have to make some adjustments to our laws. So certain things had to be kind of fine-tuned so that they would correspond perfectly so that the federal money could come right in. At the same time, it would and should have been an opportunity not to just get ready for federal money, but to have the state itself pony up some of their own dollars. Now, we're seeing all around us that neighbors are helping neighbors. Nonprofits are doing everything they can. We have individual people going out and saying thank you. We have um, all kinds of food drives, anything we can do to help our neighbor. So when you've got all these people that are pitching in, the federal government comes along and then you go to the state and the state says no. The state said, we will give this cause, these communities, these healthcare centers, these county governments and health departments, nothing. There was not one penny of state money in that legislation. And I think that is what the Democrats were dis seriously disappointed. What are you hearing from your constituents uh, in uh, northwestern Wisconsin, Ashland, Bayfield counties, the counties that you represent? How is COVID-19 affecting them both personally and uh, economically? Well, of course, there are a lot of people who are out of work. Um, but at the same time, there are a lot of people who have been feeling this way for a long time. But I think the the COVID circumstance sort of lays bare just how fragile we are in the North when it comes to the infrastructure, both physical infrastructure and social infrastructure. So when you need, for example, to test, who's gonna pay for the tests and who's gonna pay for the people to administer the tests and how do we set that up? Well, we got pretty much, but the counties don't have any money. The state didn't give it to them. So now they're just waiting and they're just pretty much, you know, putting things together as they can. Um, and when, when you know that the food banks are already uh, in, in high demand, when something like this happens and they run out of food, everything sort of becomes very apparent that we don't have what we need. And then one of the ones that I've been trying to make well known is 
internet. So now we have kids who we have been saying all along, they can't do homework at home because they don't have the internet at home. And all of the people that have been set, that are, are aware that, well, maybe they can work from home. There are many, many people who can't work from home. And then, you know, the hardest part of it is imagine if you're out in the country and all you have is a telephone and a TV set. How do you get help? Everybody says, go to, my, go to our website. Just log on and Google it. If you're out there and you've got a phone and that's it, how do you find out who to call? And you can't, you know, you, it's really hard. You can try 211, but sometimes you don't even know what question to ask. And I think that we've got to level the playing field once and for all and acknowledge that access to the internet must be made throughout the state. The governor has talked about his Badger bounce back plan, mm -hmm. the plan to incrementally reopen the economy and uh, state services and so on. Uh, what do you think of that? There's been some pushback from some of the business community saying we need to open faster, but he's going by the science, he says. Right. Well, he's going by the recommendations of the uh, federal, by, by the, the Trump administration, that you have to show 14 days. You have to show 14 days of no increase in new cases. But if you don't test, how do you know that? I mean, how do you say, okay, in Douglas County or in Bayfield, we don't have we're not testing enough to come up with that. So as much as the business will make a very, very valid case for just how much economic damage is happening, um, we are not, we cannot prove that we are at the point where the federal government says we are allowed to open. So the, the governor is doing the best he can to open those incremental things that could be considered essential or they're done in a way that um, have, could not affect anyone, the transfer of COVID. And I'm hoping that we are going to be able to do the testing and the tracking in a way that we're going to be able to open a lot more things a lot quicker than we thought. And that seems like it's especially vitally important to your district where uh, summer tourism season is a big, big deal uh, for a lot of the uh, areas in northern Wisconsin. And uh, that's right. We could still have a, a summer tourist season or what's your outlook right now? I hope we can. I mean, very often um, uh, I'm in Bayfield County and up in the city of Bayfield, we often would say that the true summer season is Fourth of July weekend. And we hope that people will. Um, continue to realize there's lots of wonderful things to do year round in the north, but truly it doesn't start to get kind of warm and where you can bring your whole family and, until late June. So it, we have not given up by any means. What do you think uh, the agenda will be going forward now for the, for the Senate and for the legislature in general? Are there gonna, is there going to be some more action, you think, uh, to help out the businesses and the, and the economy? Well, I know that we are ready. The Democrats are ready to go back to the floor. We would go back to the floor right away. And we would, we already have legislation. Uh, we proposed many amendments to the, the COVID bill that was passed three weeks ago. And so we have legislation ready to get aid to small businesses, to get aid to the small farmers and get money out there to help those who need it the most. I don't think we're gonna come back. I don't think the Republicans want to, to be quite honest. Um, I would love to hear what they have to say about it, but I am not getting a lot of encouragement from the Republican leadership that they uh, will, will have enough call for another session um, before summer. Well, Senator Janet Buley, Democrat from Mason, thank you very much for joining us and good luck going forward. Well, thank you very much for having me.